the animal, but not at once with life, only half Queen and the Archangel. Oh, I have <coughs> learned from my father that in this we feel very happy. Then he told, oh, you know that in future all the animals are standing in row to take revenge. They will cut you and they will do like this. Oh, then he, out of fear he fell on the fat of Rishi. Perhaps, anywhere it is written, that Narada Rishi show, showed him and he became infant and saw that in a row, in a line, all animals to whom he has footed, all are standing in row. He will take birth and come. He will take and pass. In this way. Hearing this, he became faint. Then the Narada Rishi at once sprinkled water and he comes in. And then he took the shelter of Srinath Rishi. What should I do? Oh, at once you should go to your house. And what wealth or what money, what thing you have, oh, give it to Brahmi. And come with only one dhoti, nothing else. Hmm? First you should broke your bow. Oh, then how I will maintain my life? Oh, don't care. I will send you so much plenty of food that you cannot eat. Then he went to his home and he donated everything what he possesses and came. And when he came, Narada Rishi, oh, you should chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I will send you so much food. And then Narada Rishi went and told, oh, that very cruel hunter has become Vaishnav. You should give him something. And then from villages. Oh, so many Vaishnav, they used to come to see him and with so much plenty of food that in one month he cannot <laughs> eat so much. Then he told, only I want for one day, nothing else. He refused. After some time, Nad Rishi came with Parvat Mahara, Parvat Rishi. When this hunter saw his guru there with any rishi, oh, he became well, overwhelmed and wanted to do pranam and to run and to do abhinandan. But he saw that some hands are there moving. So by his claws first and then he turned over. Running, but not straight. Oh, where hands, not thing. Then Narada Rishi told, oh, he was a very cruel hunter. But by the mercy of Krishna, he has been huh? so kind that even he did, don't want to kill any animal, in even an ant. Then Parvat Rishi told, you are Bancha Kalpataru or you are Kalpataru who will come inside you any touch, oh, he will be like so. So, the story tells that we should not be cruel to any M, any M. Don't kill anyone, not even ant. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has also he has, he is telling this. So, we should be like that. Give reaction to others. Don't criticize anyone, even a bad person. Otherwise, these bad quality will come into you. Srimad hmm? Bhagavati has been told. And yes, so. Parashabhava Karmani Nandi Dev Naprasamsi. Even don't criticize, even don't praise. 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 Because these qualities will come in. So be careful. After that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed Sanatan Goswami and he went further. Sanat In the meantime, 
Oh, you know Prakashananda Saraswati. He was the guru of 60,000 Mayabadi, very high class of. Hmm? And he was guru, Prakashananda. Anyhow, Mahaprabhu went in their council and sat, sat in a very uh, low position where uh, they washed their feet. Then himself, Prakashananda came and took his arms. Oh, you are in our line. You are disciple of Kesho Bharti. So, you should come with me. Oh, I am very low. Anyhow, oh, <coughs> I think that why you are not, uh, not practicing Vedanta. Why you are dancing and singing all these things? He is not good for sannyasi. Oh, you are being a sannyasi. You just should not do. <laughs> I will take you to. Oh, I will give you Vedanta Sutra meaning and everything, and you will be in our line. Give up all these things. Then what he told? He told that oh, Prabhu, my guru they have gave me. A mantra. That is, she told that oh, you should not be like that. No, no need of reading Vedanta and all these things. Only you should chant this mantra. And he gave a Gopal mantra. Oh, after some time, I became mad by chanting this name, uh, <coughs> mantra. Then I don't know who is dancing, who is he, who are. And then this mantra made me dance, singing and overwhelming. So my Guru Dev had it. Then he told some Mayabad question. Brahmi, Sapless, Nirgun, Mahaprabhu, all mildly he cut out all his arguments. And he then became he could make it. His associates, they told, them, they told that, oh, now we are standing that Sankrasaj has done this wrong thing. Only we, went, we are following only for some Pradaya and road, for the sake of some But now we are seeing that you are right. And then his guru also came and apologized, and they become all Vaishna. Like you, they become. <laughs> and then Mahaprabhu left Kashi and told Sanatan, Oh, you should write some Vaishna Sadachar. And then in Bindavan, Govinda Gopinath Madan Mohanar Hidden. You should try to one of them you should discover. And one thing more. And she Bigra Seva and Vaishnava Smriti. Then Sanatan Goswami told, I don't know what 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 are they? Then Sanatan Goswami told, I don't know what 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 are they? Then from Guru Guru Karan, accepting Guru, serving and throne. Oh, he told everything, how to serve Bigra, how to establish Bigra, how Diksha, how all these things, top to bottom, what he has written in Hari Bhakti Vilas. And then, by the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who left there and went to Vrindavan, and from Vrindavan, he went to Jagannath Puri and there he met. So, in brief, this is Sanatana. Now, before this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returning from Vrindavan and the way when he came to oh, Prayag, Ganga, Jamuna, Saraswati, three meets, three rivers. 
that is I'm telling you, before Sanasana Diksha. And he was there ten, ten days. And in Varanasi he was two months. And in here ten days. And he trained Srila Rupa Goswami. Not only trained, he kept his hand on his head. That what I am telling, all should come on our heart. Bhakti Das is oh, endless, but I am giving only one drop of Bhakti Ras to you, and then you should explain how I am telling you, and when you will write, I will inspire. Saying this, he began to tell Siddharu Goswami, what? Sansar Kramite Kano Bhagyamani. First, first you should tell what Kavi Karnapur has written for Srila Rupa Goswami. Uh, you don't remember? Priya Sarupe. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshura Numilitam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vansha Kalpataru Vyasa Chakrita Sindhu Veda Chapatitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Vyanamo Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Yam Dadati Shubhadantikam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So we've been so fortunate to hear the subject matter of Sri Sanatan Siksha where the intimate associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad, received all instructions from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and was also empowered to write Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas and commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam and so many other important grantas and shastras like Brihad Bhagavatam Ritam. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also met with his dear most intimate associate who was the brother of Srila Sanatana Goswami, that is Srila Rupa Goswami. We heard from Srila Gurudev the other day about the lives of Sri Rupa and Sanatana Goswami and how they extricated themselves from the service of the Muslim magistrate, Naub Hussein Shah, and how they came and surrendered at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how Sanatana Goswami was jailed and later escaped and came to the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. But prior to Mahaprabhu's meeting Srila Sanatana Goswami, we backtrack a little bit chronologically and we come to Prayag. And there, Srila Rupa Goswami finally came there to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after uh, also leaving the service of this Muslim magistrate. And when he came there to Prayag, oh, he approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a very, very humble manner. And he fell at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was all, also being visited by uh, Bala, what is it? Balava Bhatta Acharya. Balava. Balabha Acharya, who later became known as Balabha Acharya, 
who was actually a very learned personality and very elevated Brahmin, very highly placed in spiritual and Varnashram society. But when Srila Rupa Goswami Pad came there uh, in the presence of Mahaprabhu and Bala, Balabha Acharya, Srila Rupa Goswami stayed at a distance uh, and he demonstrated the humility of a pure Vaishnava, feeling himself very low and very fallen because of his previous association with a Muslim magistrate. So actually, even though Rupa Goswami was an exalted personality, but he took this role of deep, deep humility and actually felt that way. And Balabha Acharya, seeing Rupa Goswami uh, uh, going at a distance when Balabha Acharya was approaching him, he said, no, I don't want that you will touch me. You will become contaminated by touching me. And then Balabha Acharya actually understood that Rupa Goswami truly was an advanced soul. And Balabha Acharya also described that if a person who is very highly positioned as a Brahmin in Varnashram society, if that person is not a Vaishnava, even though he may be learned in all the Vedic Shastras, he may have memorized so many shlokas, but if he is not a Vaishnava, a devotee of the Supreme Lord, uh, but if a dog eater who is born in the family of very low, low grade persons in human society, even those who eat dogs, but he becomes a pure devotee of Krishna, he is far superior to that Brahman. So in this way, Srila Rupa Goswami demonstrated the pure uh, qualities of a true humble Vaishnava. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, there are so many pastimes that took place there in Prayag. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one day came to Srila Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami met with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for 10 days there. Uh, what, was, what was the bank, bank of the Ganga? Dashashva made a ghat there. So, Srila Rupa Goswami is actually an eternal associate of Radha and Krishna. And he is dear most associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Priya Surupe Dayata Surupe Prema Surupe Sahaja Rupe Nijanu Rupe Prabhureka Rupe Tatana Rupe Kabila Surupe. So this shlok composed by Srila Kavi Karnapur, also a dear associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing that Srila Rupa Goswami was dear most associate, Priya Swarupe, Dayata Swarupe. He was very dear to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to Swarup Damodar Goswami. And he uh, became the most intimate associate of Mahaprabhu who was empowered by him to preach the science of Bhakti Rasa Tattva. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu infused into the heart of Srila Rupa Goswami all the necessary transcendental bhavs and emotions and all knowledge by which he would be able to write the topmost Rasa Grantas. So much so that amongst even the six Goswamis, even though Srila Rupa Goswami was the uh, brother of Sanatan Goswami and Sanatan Goswami was also spiritual master of Rupa Goswami, but Rupa Goswami, he is considered the personality in whom Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu invested all of his potency to dis distribute what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come within this world to distribute. Just like the Pranam Mantra that we find in Srila Narottam Das Thakur's great book, Prem Bhakti Chandrika, there he's glorifying Srila Rupa Goswami and he's saying, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kada Mayam Dadati Swa Padanti Kam. Here he's saying that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his inner heart's desire that he came into this world to give to the Jiva souls, actually, this inner heart's desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was fulfilled by Rupa Goswami, Stapitam Jena Bhutale. 
he established within this world the transcendental mission by which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire would be fulfilled. And that mission was done through his literatures that he wrote. Sri Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu, Sri Ujvala Nilamani, Sri Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, and so many other Rasa Granthas. So the topmost literatures in all the Vaishnava Padavalis, they were com composed by Srila Rupa Goswami. And therefore he is glorified by Naratam Das Thakur in this way. He's saying, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadanti Kam. Oh, when will Srila Rupa Goswami be merciful to me? And when will he give me the shade of his lotus feet? So our acharyas have all prayed, like Naratam Das Thakur praying to Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, that song which is considered to be the highest song in our disciplic succession, uh, which was sung by uh, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj for Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur at his passing, and which was also sung by our Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, for our spiritual master, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, in his final days. So that song encompasses the final goal and aspiration of all of our Rupanuga Acharyas, that one day we can become the dust of the lotus feet of Shri Rupa Manjari, taking that dust upon our heads and worshipping that eternally. So this divine associate of Gauranga Mahaprabhu came down in this world to assist Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Rupa Goswami also, he was able to understand the deep moods of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu while no one else could do so. In Ratha Yatra festival, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was singing and dancing ecstatically, and from his lotus mouth, he was praying uh, one verse. But how did No, that's the one he wrote. Yakko Maram Hara. Yes, Yakko Maram Hara. He was saying this shloka, and no one else could understand, except for Sri Saruk Damodar Goswami, who was there. So Srila Rupa Goswami heard Mahaprabhu reciting this shlok, and then Rupa Goswami compo composed his own shlok, which was actually explaining the inner meaning of that verse. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu later one day came there to the hut of Srila Rupa Goswami, and he found, which was in the same place where Haridas Thakur used to do his bhajan near the Jagannath Mandir. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there and he saw that the palm leaf upon which Rupa Goswami had written his corollary verse explaining Mahaprabhu's verse was stuck in the rooftop, in the thatched roof. He pulled it down and he saw it. And some short time later Srila Rupa Goswami came there and Mahaprabhu greeted him very lovingly and affectionately and he slapped his cheek in a sign of affection, like, how could you understand my inner moods? How could you penetrate into my heart and understand? So all this was possible because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had empowered Srila Rupa Goswami to understand his manobhishtam and his inner heart's desire. So in, the, in this pastime of uh, Sri Rupa Siksha, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is now going to instruct Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, he now begins by describing to him that in this material world there are innumerable little oh, entities. You have to tell first, if anyone coming from Vrindavan, Mahapri used to ask him, oh, how Rupa and Goswami are, how they are doing bhajan. Yes. So Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, they stayed in Vrindavan as Srila Gurudev explained by the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And there they lived in a very transcendental way. So very often some personalities would travel uh, from Bengal and they would go to Vrindavan and they would see Srila Rupa Goswami or they would go from Puri to Vrindavan and they would meet with the Goswamis. Then when they would return back, then the different associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they would inquire they would want to hear news. Oh, how is Rupa Goswami? How is Srila Sanatan Goswami? How are they living there in Vrindavan? 
and then that person would describe to them, oh, these two personalities, they are so transcendental, they are so deeply absorbed in doing bhajan, braj bhajan in Vrindavan, they don't live any one place. Every night they stay somewhere underneath another tree in Vrindavan, constantly wandering throughout the uh, land of Braj Mandala. And there, they are doing their bhajan in separation mood from Shishi Radha and Krishna. Sometimes they're in Vamshibhat, sometimes they're in Keshigat, sometimes they're in Govardhan, sometimes they're on the bank of Radha Kund or Shama Kund, sometimes they're in Kamyavan. And in this way they wander here and there, completely absorbed in separation mood, crying out, Hey Rad, hey Braja Devi ke Chalalite, hey Nanda Suno Kutaha, Shri Govardhana Kalpa Pada Patale, Kalindi Vane Kutaha, Go Santaviti Sarvato Braja Pure, Ke Dair Maha Vivalo, Vande Rupa Sanatano Rubuya Go, Shri Jiva Go Palako. They're crying out for Radha and Krishna. Where are you, O Radha and Krishna? Where are you? Wandering here and there. And asking, uh, are you on the banks of the Jamuna River? Or are you at Giriraj Govardhan? Are you on the banks of Radha Kunda? Completely agitated by transcendental love for Radha and Krishna, absorbed 24 hours daily. They practically forgot completely to even eat. Uh, and even sleeping, sometimes they were chanting and worshipping the Lord 24 what hours. Eating? What eating? Even they would go sometimes with a little bit of begging madukari from door to door to householders. Sometimes they would be given just some dry chapati, some, some uh, flat bread. And then sometimes some dry chickpeas or they would take a little bit of what is called chaj. It is oh. called... What meaning? What meaning? Shana? Shana, chickpeas. Chickpeas, dry chickpeas. Oh, dry? Yes. And sometimes nothing. And sometimes nothing. Whole night they would what forget. doing? Whole, whole night what doing? Whole night crying out in separation, doing bhajan, chanting the names of uh, Sankhya Purvaka Nama Gana Natipi Kalavasani Krito Nidra Hara Vihara Kadi Vijito Chadyanta Dino Chayo Radha Krishna Kunaspater Madhuri Manandena Sam Mohito Vande Rupa Sanatana Raguya Go Shri Jiva Go Palako Sankhya Purvaka Nama Gana Natipi they were counting on their japa mala and chanting one lakh, two lakhs, sometimes completely absorbed 24 hours a daily, doing dandavat pranams, nidra hara vihara kadi vijito. They completely conquered over even eating and sleeping. They had practically no dependency upon their external physical necessities at all. But uh, in this way, Radha, Krishna, Gunash, Mritair, Madhuri, Maan, Andena, Sammohito, they were completely enchanted 24 hours daily, overwhelmed in the moods of remembering Radha and Krishna and their divine sweet pastimes in Braj Mandala, searching everywhere for them. In this way, Bande, Rupa, Sanatana, Nora, Guya, Go, Shri, Jiva, Go, Pala, Go. Rupa and Sanatan and the six Goswamis, they would live like this in Vrindavan, demonstrating for all to see what was the highest standard of worship in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and exhibiting this highest transcendental ecstasy in love, moods of separation from Radha and Krishna. So like this, the, the associates that would return after seeing Rupa and Sanatan, they would explain to those who were interested to hear about them, oh yes, Rupa and Sanatan, they're living like this, under the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And actually, they are directly associating, even though Mahaprabhu is in Jagannath Puri, they are directly associating with him by his order that they should stay there and grudge and do this bhajan. Now they have become absorbed in the ecstasy of the highest, highest praying. So like this, these associates, of Gauranga Mahaprabhu have ex uh, demonstrated to the whole world, to the whole Sampradaya of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's line that this is how one day we will have to follow this path of the Goswamis. 
And as Rupa Goswami has written in his Upadesha Amritam, and he has given the essence of all advice and the essence of all teachings, that one will have to live in Braja, Tishtan Braja, Tad Anuragi Jananugami, under the guidance of the uh, transcendental Rupanuga Vaishnavas, who are following the moods of the eternal associates of Braja Vrindavan, and they will have to and they will have to perform the, the practice of Nam Bhajan, Tan Nam Rupa Charitadi Su Kirtananu Smrityo Karmena Rasana Manasi Niyojya. They will have to utilize all of their time in constantly chanting, hearing, and remembering uh, the names, forms, qualities, pastimes, and uh, entourage and associates of, Chait of Radhan Krishna in Braja Vrindavan. And in this way, Kalam, Nayed, Akilam, they will have to utilize fully their time, 24 hours. Iti Upadesha Saram. Rupa Goswami is telling that of all instructions that have been given throughout all the Shastras, this is the Sar. This is the essence of all advice. So Rupa Goswami encapsulated all of these teachings in Upadesha Amrita. He heard them directly from the mouth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wrote these shlokas for all practicing sadhakas so that they may, may be able to attain perfection in this pathway of Braj Bhakti and one day attain what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to bring and it was Srila Rupa Goswami who also pointed this out for all to understand that the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world and what he actually came to give he wrote one shlok which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally heard in the assembly of the Vaishnavas in Jagannath Puri. Anarapicha charim charat kurunayava tirnat kalo samarapaitum unatojvala rasam sobakti shriyam hari purata sundara dyuti kadamba sandipita sadahridaya kandare spuratuva sachinandanaha. Here Srila Rupa Goswami explained that this transcendental. Uh, great wealth and gift. It has not been given for a very, very long time in this world. What does that mean? Since the previous Kalpa, the day of Lord Brahma, this has not been given. Samarapaitum, Karunayava Tirna Kalo, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared out of his causeless mercy in this age of Kali, of a Tirna Kalo, Samarapaitum, to give. Unnata Ujvala Ras Swabhakti Shriyam. He has come to give the transcendental taste of the divine Unnata Ujvala Ras of Srimati Radharani, which cannot be given to a Jiva soul because constitutionally the Jivas are not equipped to be able to uh, understand, to enter into these very high ecstasies that are coming from the Swarup Shakti potency of Sri Krishna himself. But Srila Rupa Goswami said, the Unnata Ujvala Rasa Swa Bhakti Shriyam, meaning the Shriyam means the beauty of that Unnata Ujvala Ras. And what is that Shriyam? What is that beauty? It is the moods of the maid servants, the Paliyadasis of Srimati Radhika. How they serve Srimati Radhika as Sri Rupa Manjari. Uh, uh, the leader of all the Manjaris are serving her and Radha and Krishna more inclined towards Srimati Radhika. Just like the beauty of a vine is the flowers, the leaves, and the little buds, the manjaris. When the wind blows on that vine, the, and then it dances in the wind, in the same way, the beauty of the love of Srimati Radhika, the Shriyam of that, is this position of service to Srimati Radhika in the form of Manjari Bhav. So this very, very intimate, esoteric, a great gift has been given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this age of Kali. He has appeared from the womb of Mother Sachi uh, and given that which has never been given before. This was revealed by Srila Rupa Goswami directly in the presence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And all of the associates, Ramananda Roy, Surup Damodar, they all very greatly glorified Srila Rupa Goswami. Oh yes, you have understood completely. So beautifully you have written like this. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he is always in the mood of Sri Radha, not in the mood of Krishna, and he's always trying to hide 
always in a concealed way, trying to hide that actually he is Krishna himself. So he said, yes, you have written such a beautiful description, but the final line where you described, oh, the son of Mother Sachi, he said, oh, you have put some sand into the sweet rice. Yeah. Yeah. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu... It is like a poison in a uh, pot of... Yeah, milk. poison in a pot of milk. Yeah. So, like this, Rupa Goswami is glorified as practically... Uh, the very personality who has fulfilled the inner desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by revealing to the world all these great glories. Thank you. Goswami was Lalita, bosom friend of Radhika, controlling even Radhika, and Ramananda Vishakha. But why we were called Rupanuga, not Sarupanu? Yes, it has been Sarupa Rupa, Rupanu. Father. Because Sarupasami also sprinkled his mercy to because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested all. Oh, you should inspire that he can establish my inner First, Sarup Damodar. He was abhinna to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He knew everything for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is his owner most of him. But in the line of Sarup Damodar, Sarup Damodar has not written any book. He has written some culture. Notebook. That he gave to Raghunath Das Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami gave to Kaviraj Goswami. And according to his culture book, oh, Chaitanya Chaitamit has been there. That is why it has become so nice, nice and sweet and <coughs> praman, more than Bhagavad. So, <coughs> also Sarup Damodha, Rairaman, glorifying this. We are all Rupanuga. All Raganuga are not Rupanuga, but all, all are Raganuga. Raghunath Das Goswami has also oh, glorified him. Sirup Manjari Padachi Sapad Padma Goshendranandan Bhujarpita Mastikaya Hamodatah Kana Gaur Padar Vinda Shambhanani Sanakais Tamasinkais what meaning? What meaning? <laughs> oh, we are describing about Rupanuga. What is Rupanuga? You should understand and follow this Rupanuga process. Are we Shloka? Arkusuna. Hare Krishna. So Sila Das Goswami, who famous in this world, that Rupanuga was means best Rupanuga Vishnu. Although the Rupa Goswami Pad had direct disciple, the Jiva Goswami Pad, he is Rupanuga also. But in our Sampradaya, we preferred Raghunath Das Goswami as a Rupanuga word. He glorified Rupa Goswami Pad and Rupa Manjari. Sri Rupa Karar Chita Pada Padma Gostenda Nandana Pujar Pitamastakaya Ha Mudata Kanaga Gauri Padara Binda Sangha Bahana Nisanaka Itava Kinkari Se. Divine couple, they did so many pastimes in Nikunjali Bond. And after that, 
Radhika became tired and she kept her head on the lap of Sri Krishna and Sri Krishna caressing her hair. Seeing this first time, and Rupa Manjari is massaging the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. Das Goswami, as a Roti Manjari, is looking towards Rupa Manjari's greedy eyes. What? Sri Rupa Manjari Karar Chita Pada Padma. Sri Rupa Manjari, what she is doing? Karar Chita, by his lotus hand, is doing or means massaging. Push my feet, Radhika's lotus feet, not Krishna's. Karachita Pada Padma. And what Radhika is doing? Gosthenda Nandana Bhujar Pitamastakaya. Keeping her head on the son of Gosthendra. Who is Gosthendra? Gosthendra is Gostha plus Indra Gosthendra, who lives in Gostha, means Brad, and king of Brad means Nanda Baba. And his son means Sri Krishna. She keeping her head on the lap of Sri Krishna. And Rati Manjari. He said, oh, when the day will come for me, when the time will come for me, then I can massage the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. The remnant. The remnant of Rupa Manjari. Mastikaya. So, Gostanda Mandana Bhujarpita Mastakaya. So, seeing that Rati Manjari's greedy eyes, Rupa Manjari understand, understood the fact. And she told, oh Rati Manjari, you come here and you can serve Radhika's lotus feet. I have to do, render another service. By this way, she gave her remnant service to Das Goswami. And Das Goswami means Rati Manjari now massaging very slowly and softly the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. So here, getting this service, she is praying to Rupa Manjari or Rupa Manjari. Only by your costless mercy, I can have this service. There is no other way. So is telling, Sri Rupa Manjari Kala Chitapada Padma Goshtendra Bhujar Pitamastakaya Amatata Kanaka Gauri Padara Binda Sangbhana Sanakaita Vakin Kariste. Who is doing? Who is the sadhak who want to be Rupanuga Vaishnava? They have to also this type of prayer and greed if you want to enter in just realm being Rupanuga Vaishnava and to serve divine couple leading towards Radhika under guidance of Srila Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Sansha Salvatari Oh. Mahaprabhu was standing there and giving instruction about bhakti that Very much dog Very much dog of being what? Guru Vay Radhikaya, Sri Krishna, Krishna Bhakta, Tadabhakta, Namo Namaha. So, Brindavanayam, Rasakeli Vatam, Kalena Luktam, Nijashakti Vutto, Sanchaja Rupam, Gita No Punasya, Vido Pragiva, Evita Vokas Krishna. Just like in the beginning of Kriya, first of all, I offer obeisances to Sri Gurudev and Sri Dandi Sanyasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. <coughs> So Sri Kaviraj Goswami has written, just like in the beginning of creation, Bhagavan Sri Narayan empowered the heart of Brahmaji with all type of Vedic Tattvasiddhanta. Then in the same way, Vrindavaniyam Rasakelivatam, the pastimes that had previously been performed by Radha and Krishna had been covered by the influence of time, especially the degraded age of Sri Kali Yuga. In the same way that Narayan empowered the heart of Brahmaji, in the same way Bhagavan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu completely empowered the heart of Rupa Goswami with the confidential pastimes of Radha Krishna that had been lost with time. Deva Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu before going to Vrindavan. He stayed there for 10 days at Dasramedya the, Ghat, there in Prayag. There Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing pastimes Daily he would go for the darshan of the Ishtadev of Prayag called Bindu Madhav. There are hundreds of thousands of devotees. They would see Gauranga Mahaprabhu chanting and dancing, Harinam Sankatan. So that time, Sri Rupa and his younger brother, Anupama, they met with the Lord there. That time Mahaprabhu was also with Sri Vallabhacharya. So when he saw Rupa and Sanatan, he went there. They said, don't... Then, Mahaprabhu said, don't embrace them. They have almost become like Muslims. Don't touch them. 
But Sri Balabacharya, as we heard, he is a high class Vaishnav. I think he is, um, he was Sukadev Goswami, and he came as Sri Balabacharya. So Balabacharya, he saw Rupa and Anupam were constantly chanting the holy name. Therefore, he could understand these are top level Vaishnavas. Therefore, Balabacharya quoted so many verses that pleased Mahaprabhu so much when he saw his nishta in Vaishnavas, Vaishnavism. Viprat visad guna yukta aravinda nada padaravinda vimukta sapacha varishtam manetar apita manovach hita ata praman punati sakulam sabudijan japumuri mana. Even one may be born in a family of brahmanas and have all transcendental qualities. But if he is not a devotee of Bhagawan, he is not dear to the Lord. But on the other hand, a devotee may be born in the family of dog eaters. But I consider, the Supreme Lord is speaking, I consider him superior because he has dedicated body, mind and words to, this, to my service. He can purify his whole dynasty while a non-devotee Brahman cannot even purify himself. In so many verses Sri Vallabhacharya quoted, Mahaprabhu was very happy seeing his nishtu in Vaishnavism. At that time, Sri Mahaprabhu also met with Raghupati Upadhyay. He quoted many verses describing, describing the glories of the Brijabhasis. Then Mahaprabhu became astonished. Mahaprabhu asked him four questions. What is the best form of the Lord? Shama Meva Paramam Rupam. Which is the best place to live? Puri Marupuri Varam. Which is the best age of Krishna? Balya, Pauganda, or Kishore? Balya Kasharika by Dayam. And last, what is the Vaya, best way to Vaya, worship? Kaisori is best. Vaya Kaisori ka dhyanam. Adayava parorasa. Adayava parorasa. And which is the best way to worship Krishna? Gopi Bhav. Adiras. When Mahaprabhu heard Adiras. Adiras means? Gopi Bhav. Shringhara. Shringhara. So when Mahaprabhu heard these four answers, he became ecstatic and made him into one verse. Shama Meva Param Rupam Puri Maru Puri Varam Dhyana Kishorika Dhyanam Adira Ad Adayava Parodasa. And saying that verse again and again, Mahaprabhu was dancing in ecstasy. When Vallabhacharya saw the Prem of Mahaprabhu, he also became astonished. Oh my God, this cannot be any jiva, how he can have such mad ecstasies. Therefore, he took Mahaprabhu across to his house. He thought it's not safe for him here. But on the way, Mahaprabhu began dancing on the boat, which was filled with water. Then Mahaprabhu jumped in the Yamuna, thinking it to be the Yamuna and Valbachaya, they brought him on. So many ecstasies Mahaprabhu manifested there. But then he met with Sirupan and Upam Goswamis. They also manifested the topmost humility. There, Sirupa Goswami Pad prayed, Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate. Krishna, Krishna, Chaitanya, Namne, Gora, Krishna, Namaha. Then, Mahaprabhu instructed Sri Rupa Goswami and Anupam Goswami for 10 days there at the Ghat at Prayag. So he said, the sweetness of Krishna is like an ocean, but I am just giving you one drop. Therefore, afterwards, Sri Rupa Goswami compiled Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu. So, so nice book there by Sri Rupa Goswami. So there he described, Sanatana Goswami, he gave all the process of Sambandha Gyan, especially. But see Rupa Goswami, he is the Acharya of Abhideya Tattva. There is the process of Bhakti. So from what my people memory can remember, there Mahaprabhu described first, the Jiva is very, very tiny one ten thousandth the size, the tip of a hair. But I need your help, then I'll ask. <laughs> so, he said the jiva is very tiny, like one ten. if you take the tip of a hair, divide it to a hundred pieces, you take one of those pieces and divide it into a hundred times again, that is some understanding of the size of the living entity. But because we are hearing he turned his face away from Krishna, he was caught by the ugly witch called Maya, therefore he's rotating in the cycle of birth and death. 
Jalajanava Lakshanam, Stavanam Lakshadim Sate, Krimio Sanko Dudoko, Paksinam, Dasa Lakshanam, Shrinksa Lakshani Pasa, Shrinksa Lakshani Pasava, Chatu Lakshani Manava. Six million. What is the meaning of Sankhati Tohi? Chitkana? The living entities are unlimited and they are Chitkan, means a tiny conscious spiritual entity, but very, very small. Why? It has been told because Mayapati self tells only one soul and only one Brahma and we are also all Brahma. So no two, but here is said. Oh, Sankhya Kito, numberless. The Mayapati say we are Eka Jiva Bhat. There is only one Jiva. But this is complete rubbish because when I have a headache, you don't have a headache. When Mahatmaj is liberated, I'm not liberated. <laughs> Therefore, there is not just one Jiva. Therefore, Mahapur described, hey, when he gets a PhD, why don't I get one? <laughs> <laughs> PhD, but Sri Dhani Maharaj has three. Sri Dhani. <laughs> so, it's not a, therefore there is not just one soul. There is not just, well, there is not just Brahman. There is millions and millions of jivas. Actually, you think even how many jivas in a glass of water, especially Indian water, so many jivas. <laughs> <laughs> and those souls, they have come to this world and they're moving through the cycle of birth and death. Javaja Nava Lakshanam, 900,000 types. No Lakhani. Javaja, no Lakhani. Nine, uh, nine lakhs, 900,000 type of aquatic species. Stavanam Laks Bimsati. Two million, twenty, you know, two million type of stavanam means non-moving entities like trees, grass, creepers, mountains, etc. Krimyo sankhya. That means krimyo means worm, insect, germ, bacteria. Pakshinam dasavakshinam. There's ten lakh, one million type of birds, beasts, one million three hundred thousand type of four-legged beasts, and Chatur Lakshani Manava, 400,000 type of living entities. Uh, so a human being. <laughs> Therefore the Jiva is moving up and down through these 8,400,000 species. Sri Jagadananda Pandit has also said, Kabu Deva, Kabu Daite, Kabu Dasa Prabhu. Sometimes he becomes a demigod, sometimes he becomes a demon. Kabu Duki, Kabu Suki, Kabu Dasa Prabhu. Sometimes he's a master, sometimes he's a slave. Like this. Sometimes he's Indra, sometimes he's a worm in stool. Kabu Daiva, Kabu Daita, sometimes he's a demigod, sometimes he's a demon. In this way, this living entity is rotating constantly, constantly. But, Brahmande, Brahmate, Kona, Bhagavana, Ji, Guru. Also, human form, very few. Yeah. Only one, four legs. Among them, Oshaba, Malek, Ulinda, Bogd also. Bogd. No, they are really, they are in shape man, human being, but they are not more than animals. There is, are there for the millions and millions of living entities, very, very few have a human form of life. They were in 12th Kanda Bhagavad, it says, even the demigods pray to Bhagavan Vishnu for a human form of life. That much is rarely achieved. So Mahaprabhu described to Rupa Goswami, uh, out of the human beings, there is two divisions, civilized and uncivilized. Uncivilized means the various barbarian tribes <laughs> inhabiting different corners of the earth. So most, and amongst them, very few are civilized human beings. Civilized means who accepts the injunction of the Veda. That even if one believes in God but doesn't accept Veda, he's still considered atheist, the pious atheist. They've added the human beings, most are uncivilized, very few are called civilized, who follow the injunctions of the scriptures. They are called karmis. Actually, karmi is an exalted position. 
You know, out of those persons who say they follow some religious principle, then actually most only follow by mouth. Mm -hmm. But they're not actually following by their daily day-to-day -day life. So many people say, I'm a devotee, but not doing, not following the principles as given by Rupa and Sanatana, and what type of devotee they are. Then those who follow very strictly the principles of Karmakan, religious principles, most of them are completely bewildered by the desire to enjoy materially. Very few of them will desire for, the, for, desire for liberation. That is mukti. And out of those many thousands who desire to be liberated, may only one will be liberated. But mukti nam apisidanam narayana parayana kote sapu mahamur out of many millions of persons who wanted to be liberated, only very few are liberated. And out of thousands of such liberated persons, Sudulaba Prasanatma, to find one devotee of Lord Narayan, Sudulaba, very rare. Why? Because they're always happy. And Sri Guruji says, to find a pure devotee of Narayan, how difficult. But to find a devotee of Ram, even more rare. To find the devotee of Mathuras Krishna, even more of it. Narayana Bhakta, Krishna Bhakta, more Then to find the devotee of Krishna in Dasira, so rare in Vrindavan. In Satyras, even more. In Batsarya, even more rare. To find a, in Gopi Bhav, extremely rare. And to find those who are one pointed to Radharani, you can imagine how rare they are. So Mahaprabhu gave this division of such human society. Then after describing the rarity of the devotees of Krishna, Brahmande, Brahmate Kona, Bhagavana Jeev, Guru Krishna, Krishna Prasade Pai, Bhakti Lada Beach. Brahmande, Brahmati. Brahmande means universe. Brahmati means wandering. Kona Bhagavana Jeev. A very fortunate soul, Guru Krishna Prasade Pai, Bhakti Lada Beach. By the mercy of Guru and Krishna, they receive the seed of devotion. The Guruji explains this really nicely. He said, why is it the mercy of both Bhagawan and Gurudev? Because Bhagawan, of course I'm using language, some folk will be there. When Bhagawan manifests the jiva from his Tathasta Shakti, each jiva has a fixed swaru, an eternal, perfect, loving relationship with Krishna, in whatever mood it may be. Therefore, without the mercy of Bhagawan, you cannot even have a swaru. You can't even exist. <laughs> what to speak about? How you can get bhakti if you don't exist? <coughs> Yeah, but the mercy of Bhagawan, because he gave you a suru, he gave your existence. So without the mercy of Bhagawan, you cannot have anything. But without the mercy of Guru, you cannot, you cannot manifest. Therefore, something is in the jiva, and something is in the mercy of Gurudev. An example is given. There's a special constellation called Swati Nakshatra. That rain has a great potency. When that rain falls on an oyster, then it produces a pearl. When a pearl <coughs> falls on a cow, it produces a yellow color called Gorochana. When it falls on the head of an elephant, you can find an elephant pearl. When it falls on a banana plant, then it makes camphor. When it falls on a snake, then it produces a jewel. Therefore, if that water falls on a rock, it doesn't produce anything. There's some inherent potency in the oyster, in the cow, in the banana plant, in the snake. And there's, therefore, there's something there in the jiva that has come by the mercy of Bhagawan, and Gurudev's mercy is like the rainfall in the Swati Nakshatra constellation. Therefore, the mercy of Bhagawan and the mercy of Gurudev. One thing, whose mercy comes first? Without the mercy of Bhagawan, how you could get Gurudev? Therefore, really, if you think, the mercy of Bhagawan gives you Guru. By the mercy of Bhagawan, you get Guru, just like Dhruva. He was crying in the forest, where is Narayan? I want to meet him. Then Narayan could understand, now Dhruva is crying for me. Therefore he inspired the heart of Narad Muni to come and give mercy to Sri Dhruva. Therefore without the mercy of Bhagawan, no one can get Gurudev. But without the mercy of Gurudev, no one can get Bhagawan. Therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this complete conception by saying the mercy of Guru and the mercy of Bhagawan. We cannot be a follower of the chicken of, you know, Adamurdi Naya, the logic of half a chicken. Then money, 
Mari Kori Se Beach Kori Aropan Shravana Kirtana Jal Kori Sachan. Therefore, the spiritual master, he plants the seed of devotion. That means the desire to serve Krishna, Krishna Seva Basana, Chatat Bhavadi Madhudya Sutinadira Pekshade, Nasastram Shana Yuktam Chat Bhav Lob Utpati Lakshanam. What is the sign of greed? I mean, hearing of the sweetness of Krishna and the service those parikas perform to Krishna, one may de develop a greed. I also want to serve like Madhya Soda. I also want to serve like Sri Rupa and Rati Manjari. So that tendency, I must also do bhajan like that, that is the seed of Raj Shraddha. And the seed of, when the seed of Sastya Shraddha comes, when we hear the injunction of scripture, we think, if I don't go, if I don't do bhajan, I'm going to go where the fifth canto is described. Whatever he does bhajan that way. But anyhow, whether it's Vaidhi, whether that shraddha is coming from Vaidhi Bhakti or that shraddha is when in mature stage in Raganuga, still both forms of shraddha come by the mercy of Vaishnavas. Therefore, the devotee should be like a gardener who plants the seed in the heart. Malan kori se beach kori aropan shravana kirtana jal kori sechan. And that time he waters the seed of devotion by Shravan Kirtan, hearing and chanting. So we should not make a mistake of thinking that means my own hearing and chanting. Just like if you water a seed with salt water, no benefit. That water, that seed has to be watered by pure water. Our Hari Kirtan is not pure. Who is performing pure Hari Kirtan? Pure Gurudev, Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru. Therefore, even after the seed is planted, one must hear from high-class Vaishnavas. Swajati Asraya Smita. Those devotees who are more advanced than us, those devotees who are affectionate to us, and those devotees who have the same mood that we are aspiring to. Therefore, we should hear from Gurudev and Vaishnavas. That Hari, that Hari Kirtan is like pure water which nourishes the seed. Sri Vishnu Chagavitaka said that seed has six leaves. First two leaves come in the stage of sudden bhakti. Oh, I have described this uh, yesterday. We heard all that yesterday. So, as the sea, as the bhakti ladder beach, the transcendental wish-fulfilling creeper of devotion, as it grows by the process of shravan kirtan, then it moves through the coverings of the universe. That means earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. That means if we're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and we have some material desire. That means that our Bhakti Lada Bija is still within this universe. Otherwise, where material desires are coming from. But by continuing the process of Southern Bhajan, then it pierces even past the, Brahm, the coverings of the Brahmanda, the universe. It goes past the Brahma Jyoti, past the Viraj, past the Brahma Jyoti, past Lakshmi Pati, Narayan in Vaikuntha, past Ram Chandra Bhagawan, and finally it reaches the feet of Sri Radha Krishna. Then it produces a very nice fruit. That is the fruit of Prema Bhakti. So it says that when the gardener eats the fruit, then he becomes very happy. It means when the Guru sees the disciple tasting the fruit of Prema Bhakti, then he becomes satisfied. <coughs> so many things are there. Yes. Huh? Oh, so one must be careful. One must make a fence to protect the very tender Bhakti Lada Beach. Guru Ji one time said, like a small plant, his roots are not very deep, he cannot get water by, his, by himself, therefore he can dry up, therefore that is our stage. We don't have Ruchi directly for the name or hearing Kirtan, therefore we must keep very closely to the pure Vaishnavas who have taste and they will protect the small plant. So that fence which protects the Bhakti Lada Beach from goats and other people, that fence is Sadhu Sangha. But no matter how carefully one cultivates the earth and waters the plant, Yadi Vaishnava Parad Uti Hati Mata Utpad Yeya one must be very careful of the mad elephant called Vaishnava Parad. Because he will stomp on the creeper and rip it out until it dries. One point I'd like to discuss, if I'm wrong. Bhakti is never lost. Aparad will not destroy Bhakti, Aparad will cover Bhakti. Because bhakti is transcendental, it can never be lost. Krishna says in Gita, in this path there is no loss or diminution. But by Vaishnava Brahad, our bhakti becomes covered. Then when we suffer the result of that Vaishnava Brahad for how severe it was, then that upright becomes diminished, then again we can start our bhakti. 
Also, one must be very careful because with the creeper of pure devotion, there are many, many weeds. There are many, many weeds. Or upasaka means side branches. That means the desire for love, puja, pratishta. Sometimes we know also in our own miserable life, if you're performing <coughs> kirtan, then so much pratishta, wow, he's really far out, maybe he's an incarnation of Sukadev Goswami or something. Then the devotee becomes proud, he becomes attached to wealth, becomes attached to name and fame, he begins to enjoy the property of Guru and Gauranga. He forgets, my, anything I'm getting is by the mercy of Gurudev, anything I'm speaking is by the mercy of Gurudev. They forget that. And what happens? Upasaka means deviations sprout. Therefore, Gurudev will not cut those deviations. Gurudev will point out the deviations, and the disciple must remove them by their own effort. No, no, again, clarify. Therefore, when the water of Shravan Kirtan and Bhakti is being taken by these upasakas, means like weeds and deviations in the form of desire for wealth, love, puja, pratista, wealth, fame, to become guru, this and that, then that will take away the strength, the water of the, and the main creeper will become stunted. Bhakti will you should be always careful. Because when you are chanting, remembering, doing all services to Krishna, but you have desire. I want a very beautiful wife. I want a very beautiful husband. I want to enjoy. And hearing her katha and others he is also making hearing. But what is there is no pure bhakti. That is karma kanda. And he will by that bhakti he will have praise. Oh high class of position, a very good wife, and so all this. So these are bhakti pada, these are <coughs> obstacles in bhakti. I have seen so many, hmm, those who were serving as a brahmachari to Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nara, hmm, they are brahmachari. I think in, in this assembly, there, there are so many, those who are brahmachari, pakka brahmachari. But what became? Hold on. Their bhakti became loose. Loose. They could not protect it. So we should always be very careful for this. If you want pure bhakti, don't desire anything worldly thing. Anna vilasita sunna. Oh, don't cover your bhakti by karma, gyan, jog, tapasya, astrology, and other things. Be careful. Otherwise, you will have very good position. You will be very wealthy. I know that how they became all brahmachari at that time. Now so wealthy, so good position. But bhakti where? It went. So we should be very careful. Then, if they will cut all these upsakha, <coughs> and then moon sakha will go there. But very, be very, very careful from aparat, from praise, any worldly desire. Only to serve Krishna, only to praise Krishna, then it will be done. And then by um, having this tree, uh, creeper, oh, you can go below And there, oh, you will test Dasara, Shakara, Basalara, Basalara, and even you can test Ostringara. I'll go Krishna. This is the aim and object of our life. Thank you. One question. <laughs> this Upasaka, who will cut? The Guru will cut or the disciple will cut? He should cut. Mali. 
Mali, Mali. Guru will point out the faults. Uh, but if he is not uh, expert, then he will ask Gurudev how to cut. And then he will tell them, oh, like this. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu All this kind of bhakti will come only from Sutta Bhakti. And from Sutta Bhakti, frame like this come. And it will increase in Sne, Man, Prane, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Mahabhav, and so on. What is then Sutta Bhakti? Oh, Anna Bila Sita Chunyam. First, you have come to hear, you should hear. Om Jnana Timaran Dhasya Jnana Nuraslakya Chakshur Nuratam Jena Tasvai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Gurudev ordered me to explain how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described pure bhakti to Sri Rupa Goswami. He gave this, to inspire him to understand the definition of pure bhakti, Uttama bhakti. Anya vilashita sunyam jnana kama janavartam anukuyena krishnanuk chilanam bhakti uttama The continuous unbroken cultivation of all endeavors of the body, mind and words here continuous like a stream of honey from a jar. If you pour some water it may splash here or there. But when honey comes from a jar, it's in a very thick flow without any break. So when all of the endeavors of the body, the mind, and the words, are, and <coughs> feelings are in a very thick, unbroken stream. And this is exclusively meant for the benefit of Sri Krishna, under the guidance of pure Vaishnavas under the guidance of Sri Guru. And when it is not covered in any way by karma, a fruitive mentality, that means reward-seeking activity, it is not covered by jnana, the desire to attain knowledge and thereby find liberation, emancipation, by yoga, the performance of austerities to attain mystic powers, by dry renunciation, and so many other things, not covered by these things, and also completely devoid of even the slightest smell, the slightest trace of any other desire, then that cultivation of activities and moods is called Uttama Bhakti, transcendental devotion. So in this verse, the verse has two parts. The first part describes the tatastal action or the marginal characteristics of Uttama Bhakti. And the second line describes the Swarup Lakshana, or the intrinsic characteristics of pure bhakti. What are the intrinsic characteristics of pure bhakti? Anukul yena krishna anu shilanam. Here the verb is shilanam. It comes from shildatu. This verbal root means a cultivation. So bhakti is something dynamic. And this cultivation has two aspects. The cheshta root activities, and bhava roop, the form of emotions. The cheshta roop is also divided into two parts. That is called the sadhana roop and karya roop. Sadhana roop means practices, and karya roop refers to the engagement in hearing, chanting, and remembering, which comes naturally and spontaneously as the anubhav of the appearance of Shuddha Sattva in the heart. The sadhana roop is also divided into two parts, pravritti atmaka chesta roop and nivritti atmaka chesta roop. Those two parts are pravritti atmaka chesta roop, 
the positive endeavor to do all of those things that are favorable for bhakti, such as engaging in hearing, chanting, and remembering, such as following the Upadesha Amrita of Rupa Goswami, the positive injunctions, such as Utsahan Nisyadharya Tatakarma Pravatana, always being enthusiastic, being patient, having confidence. These are the positive endeavors. And at the same time, there should be Nivriti Atma Kachestaru, an endeavor to avoid the negative things. Atyahara Priyasa Cha Prajapone Magraha, loose talk, over endeavoring, and the engagement in sense gratification. All of these things should be given up. Ten types of Nam Aparad, ten types of offenses against the Holy Name. One should endeavor to avoid them. And in this way, there is the positive and negative engagement that is under the Cheshta Rup. Now we come to the Bhava Rup. The Bhava Rup is divided into two parts. That is called Stahi Bhava Rup, which is the, emo the foundational emotion. It may be in Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsaya, or Madhurya, Rati. Five primary types. And when this becomes more intense, it becomes the Prema Rup, Prem. And this Prem will develop in <coughs> stages. Prem, Sneha, Maam, Pranaya, Raga, Anurag, Bhav, Maha, Bhav, Rudha, Bhav, Adirudha, Bhav, Mordan, Mohan, up to, there is in Radhika only, Madanakya, Maha, Bhav. And the other aspect of Bhav Rup is Sanchari, Bhav Rup. In the ocean of the foundational emotion, which is called Rati or Stai Bhav, 33 types of transitory, transitory assisting emotions <coughs> rise and fall like waves. So in this way, in the, only the word Shilanam, Shila Rupa Goswami, has painted a picture of all the various aspects of, and ingredients of Sadhan Bhakti, Bhav Bhakti, Prema Bhakti, and all the types of love and all the types of rasa up to Radhika's mood in the word Shilanam. This Shilanam has a prefix, Anu. Anu means Nirantaryamai, continuous. And Anu also means Anugatyamai, that Bhakti should be under the guidance of a pure devotee. Krishna Anu. Here Krishna Anu means that... What is the meaning of Anugatya? Anugatya means that devotional service should, must should be for, performed under the guidance <coughs> of Sri Guru and Vaishnavas. To disobey or obey Guru. Obey. To obey Guru or disobey. Or to obey Guru. So why not so many devotees are not obeying me? As you, Duradaiva. <laughs> Duradaiva. So you should pray to Krishna. And Guru Dev also. That you should come in your own position. I know. You should know. Uddhav has not married. Hanuman has not married. Especially Narad, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Jiv Goswami, no. Why? Because if they will marry a lady, half of his energy will go to that lady. And if he is son, ten son and ten daughters, then twenty times plus one, oh, what will remain? Oh, how he can do? So, we take sannyas for this, if married even. In fourth age, after Ban Prastha. Only for this, that we can give our whole energy, not a single piece to others. Because Krishna does not take oh, any part, he only takes complete. Oh, go on. Here, Krishna Anu Shilanam, the word Anu means that bhakti is for Krishna or in connection with Krishna. So those who have realization of Krishna directly, they may serve him. But those who have no realization of Krishna, how can they do Krishna Anu Shilana? So Anu also means not only directly for Krishna, also in connection with Krishna. So a conditioned soul who has no direct sensory experience of Krishna, his activities can become in connection with Krishna when those activities are under the guidance of Sri Guru and Vaishnava. So here, Anukul Yena. Anukul Yena means Pratikul Bhav Rohita. The absence of any anti antagonistic mood towards Krishna. It's very important that Srila Rupa Goswami Pai has included this word Anukul. Someone might say 
that bhakti means the activity that is pleasing to Krishna. But if we define bhakti in this way, then our definition will have two defects. One defect is called avyapti dosh, and the other defect is called ati vyapti dosh. Vyapti means to cover. Avyapti means that the definition does not cover everything that is bhakti. In other words, the definition is too narrow to include everything that is really bhakti. And ati vyapti dosh means the covering goes too far, the overextension of the definition. For example, when Krishna is fighting, Krishna and Balaram are fighting with Chanura and Mustik. At that time, Chanura and Mustik are beating them with their fists. And Krishna, he enjoys this. He's relishing Vira Rasa. So this activity is giving happiness to Krishna. Therefore, is it bhakti? No, it's not. But if we say bhakti is what gives pleasure to Krishna, then the activities of Chanura and Mustik would be bhakti. And therefore, something that is not bhakti would fall into our definition. So our definition would be um, guilty of the ativyapti dosh, the fault of overextension of the definition. On the other hand, when Sri Krishna was drinking the breast milk of Mandiya Shoda, and she saw that the milk on the stove was boiling over, she thought, I should stop the milk from boiling over, because from this milk I can make paneer and so many other preparations for Krishna that I cannot make from my breast milk. So Mandiya Shoda put Krishna down, but he didn't want to be put down. And he was very upset. He bit his lip and stamped his foot, and he became red-faced, and he wanted to make some mischief to take revenge. So here, the activity of Mother Yashoda did not make Krishna happy. Does that mean that it's not bhakti? No, surely it was bhakti. But if we say that bhakti is that which pleases Krishna, then Mother Yashoda's activities will fall outside the range of our definition. So our definition will be guilty of the defect of avyapti dosh, the defect of underextension of the definition. Therefore, to give a perfect, an exact, accurate, precise definition, Rupa Goswami did not say bhakti is to please Krishna. He said it's the cultivation of all endeavors for the benefit of Krishna. <coughs> for its ultimate benefit, it is anukul yena. It is, has, it is in a favorable mood. It is devoid of any antagonistic mood. So in this way, Rupa Goswami defined the swarup lakshanam, the intrinsic characteristic of bhakti. Now, if all these activities are there, all these qualities are there, but the tatasta lakshan is also not present, it cannot be called uttama bhakti. The tatasta lakshan is first of all anyabilashta shunyam, that it should be devoid of, shunyam means completely devoid of anya abilas, other desires, desires other than that to serve Sri Krishna. And it should be jnana, kamadi, and avritam. Here, Rupa Goswami, he did not say, Anyabilashta shunyam, jnana kamadi sunyam. Eh? Did not say completely devoid of karma and jnana. Why? For a sadhak in this world, they cannot be completely free of karma and jnana. We always have to do some activities. One will have to bathe, one will have to breathe, and so on. These are also activities. We cannot be devoid of them. And also, if a person is in society, sometimes they have to set an example. Like Advaita Charya. He does not have to do any sadhana ceremony for his forefathers, yet he did it, so that many people would come together and engage in Harikata and Kirtan. So this is a, a performance of karma, to do sadhana for the forefathers. But if it is done, but without faith, that, oh, if I do this, my bhakti will increase, or if I neglect it, it will also be detrimental to my bhakti. If one understands, it will not have any effect at all. Then with that kind of faith, the performance of some karmas will actually be anavritam. It will not cover bhakti. Now, jnan is of three types. Tat pagartha jnan, twam pagartha jnan, and brahma jivaikya jnan. Tat pagartha jnan means knowledge of who is God. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the ocean of rasa. He is sarva shaktiman. He is the origin of all en energies. He is the ocean of all opulence and sweetness. This is Tattva Dr. Gyan. And in the beginning stage of our spiritual life, this knowledge is important and helpful. And it will not cover bhakti, this type of knowledge. Then we have Trampa Dr. Gyan, means knowledge of the jiva. Who am I? I am a very tiny, as we have heard today, insignificant, infinitesimal, one ten thousandth the tip of a hair. Part, part and parcel of Sri Krishna, an emanation, manifestation of his Tathasta Shakti. And by Swarup, by constitution, I am Sri Krishna's servant. All this type of knowledge is called 
Tvam padata gyan. And in the beginning stages of bhakti, this is also in helpful and important, and it will not cover bhakti. But the next type of knowledge, that is Brahma, the Jiva Brahma Aikya Gyan, the idea, the knowledge that the Jiva and Suparabrahma are one, absolutely one in all respects. This type of Gyan completely covers bhakti, and therefore that Gyan must be neglected. So if all these sim the Tathasta Lakshan symptoms are there, and the Swarup Lakshan symptoms are there, then that cultivation is called Uttama Bhakti. Very good. Thank you. Vrindavan Prabhu has served his Guru Dev on one. Bhagavan. Bhagavan Prabhu. He has served his Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, in so many ways. He held that Vrindavan uh, Krishna Balram temple. temple. Oh, how beautiful. <coughs> and everywhere he helped him. I want that he should tell something. Two lines. Yes, <laughs> I remember. I remember meeting you in the room in the guest house. He liked you so much. We liked you so much. Yes, I yeah. <laughs> Because you have served your Guru I, I want that again you should serve. Well, I wanted to speak, um, <coughs> I haven't studied Sanskrit in a while like a lot of you, but um, I wanted to speak something practical. And I think about Maharaj a lot, because I know so many people have been inspired. Now, you can try to understand the very technical details of what composes coming to a high level of bhakti. And so, Jiva Goswami and Rupa Goswami, they've written very, what you might call, quantum theory of bhakti, <laughs> where you can go down to the microcosmic level of how the electrons move around the lotus feet. <laughs> uh, and that is good for keeping the mind interested there's a point just like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita when someone becomes so materially attracted first there's attraction then there's so many different levels and ultimately it leads to what you would consider becoming absorbed in material life. Whatever it is that attracts you to material life, because it's the reflection of spirituality, there is something that attracts you to spiritual life. It may be, for the most part, for someone, a temple. It may be another devotee who comes and makes you aware, opens a window, Whatever it is, like Prabhupada used to say, no one can tell you after you taste an orange what an orange tastes like. So we have to see that one of the abilities to love, and that is an ability, it's not just a theory. There's a lot of theory that can be spoken which ultimately has to be translated, whether in Sanskrit, in English, whatever language, into an ability to, for someone to actually experience the love that you have in you and inspire the love. Let's take Maharaj for an example. He inspires love. So what does that mean? That means that 
on a certain foundation level, as a devotee, you become kind to each other. You become respectful to each other. You cannot be preaching way up here and be uh, foreboding down here. People used to quote all kinds of high things and be mean to their wives or be mean to their children or consider those who were not devotees to be karmis, to be like us. The high-minded spiritual master teaches you to have a vision, not just an intellectual vision, but an actual vision that when you look, you see everyone is from one source. Not that the Muslim source is different than the Hindu source, is different than the Jewish source. That is the advantage of Vaishnavism. It's supposed to cut beyond religion. If Vaishnavism, because it's misunderstood, turns into a religion, then you make sectarian. This is Narayan Maharaj's group. This is Prabhupada's group. What makes that different than the Muslims and the Christians? Or the Jews and the Christians? It doesn't. There has to be a piercing ability to love that goes through all that. And that's what you have the fortune of observing not just Maharaja's intellect, but you have the opportunity to observe his heart, just like we had the opportunity to observe Prabhupada's heart. Now that's supposed to ignite something. It's not supposed to ignite imitation. I remember when we were all growing up, people used to like to imitate how Prabhupada spoke, even if you came from Atlanta. <laughs> you tried to sound like Prabhupada, or you tried to walk like Prabhupada, or you tried to mm, like <laughs> The idea is to try to see like he sees. Try to see how he sees. And that's when you have a guru. You can say, I have a guru, but that doesn't mean anything. You can say, I have a spiritual name. That doesn't mean, that means something. Okay, it means something. But what it really means is that you can look at your, an individual who may be opposed to you, and try to understand you have the same father and mother. You have the same God. You have the same father. You have the same mother. You have to bring it down to something practical. And all of this is not just for an intellectual exercise. That so much can be quoted here and there. It must be practical. Not just even in building temple, not just even in making books, but building your heart. That's what counts. This is the yoga of bhakti. It's the yoga of the heart. It's not just the yoga of the intellect. It's not just the yoga of the mind. It's not just the yoga of architecture and building temples. It's not just any of that. It's how this has been melted and transformed into something beautiful. So even if someone doesn't see you as beautiful, even if someone sees you as crazy, don't they always see spiritual people as crazy? <laughs> the materialists see pe spiritual people as crazy, and the religionists see spiritual people as crazy. Otherwise, why is there conflict between two groups such as Prabhupada started and as Maharaj is here? Why? Because religion is a far thing from spirituality. So in building all these temples and in having all these gatherings, this is not about just saying Maharaj is great, he's great, he's so pure. It's about you understanding because he has achieved this. What he has achieved is also in you 
Otherwise, <coughs> what is the ability of, the, what is the meaning of part and parcel? We are all part and parcel. Someone has risen to shine. That means that you don't always have to walk around saying, I am the worm in the stool, I am the worm in the stool, I am the worm in the stool. No, you can also shine. As he shines, out of respect, you never say, I can shine as big or whatever. That may be, as Prabhupada said, the father always likes when the son outshines him. But the son or daughter never thinks that way. But that may be. So these gatherings here, as Prabhupada started and as many people continue, these gatherings are about transformation. And that's the only thing they're about. And unless there is transformation, then what was, gained, what was gleaned from all of this? That you can learn a new Sanskrit word, or you can learn a new Sanskrit verse, or you can sound intellectual. It's transformation. And that transformation, what this world needs, as Prabhupada's friend, the Beatles said, what you need is love. And that's what he's teaching. So we thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>